right, good morning again. Today, we have a very special guest with us. It's Ben Hall, the founder of Katakoda.com. And why am I sharing that with you? Well, very simple, let me quickly show you. Um, you might know already, but if not, learn.openshift.com actually is powered by Katakoda. And we are very happy customers and we are uh, building out all the, uh, the different courses there. And, you know, so I thought it makes sense to talk with the man and, uh, yeah, see what, what he's got to say and uh, where the whole thing is heading. So welcome, Ben. Hey, wow, thank you. It's going to be uh, it's always nice to talk to you and always nice to have a conversation about Katakoda. Cool. Thanks a lot for your time. Um, now, can you tell us a little bit about the background? Like, what have you doing before Katakoda? What's, you know, what's, what's up with you? Yeah, sure. So, as you kind of kindly introduced, uh, Katakoda is very much focused on uh, learning and helping developers upgrade their skills and understand new technologies and how it can actually be adopted um, to solve their problems. Um, so I've always had an interest in helping developers and sharing content. So uh, I've spoken at many different conferences, um, some of which we have co-presented at the same conference, which is always, always good, the nice validation, um, and delivered training courses and different blogs and writing and books, etc. So um, I've done many different things within the community um, in the background, and I think Katakoda is just a bringing everything together um, and kind of helping showcase uh, what's happening within the community and the ecosystem and what developers, uh, what's important for developers. Right. So imagine, I, I know it's hard to imagine that anyone out there would not know what Katakoda is, but imagine someone out there doesn't know, like in an elevator pitch, what, what's, what's Katakoda about? What, what can you do with it? So, <clears throat> yeah, so we're an interactive learning platform for software developers. So we teach developers how to learn and how to use Docker, Kubernetes, OpenShift, obviously, um, but also the other aspects of the cloud native ecosystem. So where does tooling like Prometheus sit in? And how do you start monitoring and um, understanding what's happening within systems? And we take people from not having any awareness. So foundation understanding of what containers are and get them to the point where they can securely deploy docker containers within kubernetes or on top of kubernetes in a beautiful um, architected system um, and kind of walk people through all of the different concerns and all of the different aspects um, via the platform and the platform is interesting because it's all interactive there's lots of great ways of learning um, these technologies but I believe the best way is to actually try it and to experiment and enter in the command, see the errors, figure it out and work out actually what's happening in the covers and not just watching someone um, as a passive um, listener. And so when you go to Katakoda, not only do you have 100, 150 free tutorials, you also have the interactive platform um, and uh, a Kubernetes cluster which has been pre-configured that you can experiment with Within the browser, you don't have to worry about downloading or installing any, anything. You can just go on and get started instantly, learn, experiment, break everything, hit refresh, and you get given a brand new, clean, uh, fresh environment. And I've seen you've uh, recently added uh, even machine learning. So Kubeflow is there as well. People can toy around with the Kubeflow, which is essentially um, yeah, TensorFlow plus, plus uh, the, the Jupyter notebook, so they can do machine learning there. Um, I understand. Yeah. Like, I'm not sure if everyone knows that, but this is really like, this is the real thing, right? You're really deploying a Kubernetes cluster there or OpenShift cluster or whatever, and really interacting with the real thing, right? It's not just going on in your browser, right? Exactly, yeah, it's not simulated, it's not faked in any way. You can see everything that's happening and it's a complete uh, environment. And so within the case of Kubernetes, you have your um, primary kind of master control plane, and then you have nodes and you can, um, reboot them and see kind of like workloads go down and see how Kubernetes responds and then bring them back up again and um, kind of like experiment in a safe place. Um, and because we don't have any restrictions, like it's um, free for all. So you, if you want to start crashing boxes and kind of uh, simulating failures or networking going down, then that's awesome. Um, and it's a great place to do that instead of doing it on, a, on your production 
<laughs> production systems. So you said you have no restrictions. That means like, you know, the Bitcoin miners, they would just go there and have their farms there for hours and hours. Or they, I, I guess there is like a timeout, right? So we do have certain restrictions in place, um, but we try and have the restrictions so that they don't limit someone's learning uh, capabilities, right. but we limit someone's Bitcoin mining capabilities. Um, and obviously we're, clear. yeah, it's an open platform. Um, and some of the scenarios like on OpenShift, we don't even prompt for an email or kind of like any sign up. So people can just jump in and get started straight away. Um, and obviously that does attract some unwanted attention every now and again. Um, but yeah, as we see different things emerging and different approaches, then we uh, combat that so that they don't get very far. Right. Let's switch gears a little bit. Like from from we've talking been talking about the the end user, the consumer, whatever aspect here so far. Uh, but what about you know? Imagine I have a, a cool open source project or whatever, and I want to show it off. I want to you know, give people something to try it out. Um, can I just go there and create something, or do I? How do I go about that? Yeah, so we want to work with scenario. different. Yeah, we want to work with different open source projects and help and showcase what they're working on and why it's valuable and why it should exist. Um, and so that it's somewhat difficult to do just by going to someone's GitHub repo and trying to understand and trying to see all of the moving parts and like is this even relevant for solving my problem. And so this is where. Um, Katakoa can help and can extend that. And so you can go into the platform, you, we have a teaching section, um, and then you can start creating your own content on top of it. You have your own profile page. Um, you can repurpose our existing environment. So if you need Kubernetes or if you need Docker, then that's all set up and pre-configured. Um, you select that base environment, start writing some content in Markdown, click publish, and you have a beautiful interactive scenario which can showcase demos, interactive ways of learning, um, however you want to demonstrate what you're what you're building. Right, right. And I understand there are like two ways if you like just want to quickly do something, you have an interactive editor in the browser, or you can have a real Git repo backing it and then essentially working working with that uh, you know in your favorite editor on desktop or whatever. Yeah, completely. So we offer different ways which kind of match how people like to create content. So some people like the in-browser experience. Um, it's more uh, self-contained and great for kind of technical writers and documentation teams because they don't need to understand the Git workflow and kind of create a GitHub repo, et cetera. Um, but when we're working with kind of open source projects and teams and collaboration, GitHub is a natural place. It's where everything is sitting already. Um, so you can create a GitHub repository um, link that to Catacoda, and then when you do a push to the repository, that automatically gets pulled in by ourselves, and then we make it available um, onto the website. And then that's how you have this really nice workflow um, to producing your content. Awesome, awesome. Wow. Um, all right, let's uh, move on a bit more towards you know the future in terms of you know what what's your plan in 2018? What's features or whatever you want to share with us in terms of the future of Karakoda? Yeah, so the whole landscape of cloud native is changing so rapidly, it's hard to predict what the end of 2018 is going to look like. Um, but there's some things which we're definitely excited about working on. Um, well, we have the interactive nature at the moment. Um, it's At the moment, it's very descriptive. So we walk you through how to solve particular problems. Um, and so we give you like, how do you deploy a container? Okay, well, here's Docker run, this is what the images are, this is where the hub exists, et cetera. And then, for example, of security, it's like, right, here's C groups, here's namespaces, this is what's happening in the covers. And we're kind of walking people through those different steps. What I think the next stage, what we want to experiment is making it more challenge focused. So how can you verify that you understand what we're explaining? And so you can walk through something like, yes, I understand now how to launch a container. And it's like, okay, so prove it. So actually go ahead and throw oh. particular challenges um, and particular aspects um, to Katako uh, on Katakoda, uh, and then use that to kind of like verify that you have understood all the different moving parts, making sure you're not missing something, um, test your command line skills in a safe, safe place um, and then that kind of reinforces that whole kata mindset which is where the name came from so like deliberate learning continuous practicing um, repeating the same steps over and over again to improve missile memory and 
make it something which is very natural. And I think Catacode is in a great place now to be able to offer and support that type of learning. Um, and so it's a natural extension to what the platform is. So that's going to be fun. Um, so we definitely are working on that. Um, and then the side is more content, um, working with different open source projects and different communities um, to showcase what they're working on. Um, and kind of areas, as you mentioned, Kubeflow um, is an exciting project. It's kind of an, it's an extension to Kubernetes. And so it falls within the kind of our existing content banner. But once we start talking about Kubeflow, then teaching TensorFlow makes perfect sense. And when you're teaching TensorFlow, then teaching the rest of the machine learning ecosystem. And it's kind of a natural yeah. evolution and a natural growth um, plan, which we're slowly rolling out. Um, we already have some great TensorFlow content on the website, um, which kind of goes into the different as aspects of TensorFlow, but also into deep learning and how TensorFlow works in the covers. And it gets a little bit too complex even for me. Um, I am not a data scientist by any stretch of the imagination, um, but it's, it's proven really popular and people are really excited. It's a great way to see how you can actually start training models. And because it's all hosted by ourselves, you don't have to worry about having an expensive laptop or having a huge machine available um, to your disposal. You can all train it. Um, Via south, and then you can just focus on what the results are instead of worrying about burning through your um, SSD disk on your laptop. Right, right, right. We essentially outsource all these worries to to you and your team, and and we can just you know I mean, we use it at the roadshows and and you know in the booth or whatever, and it's just awesome because all you need is a is a laptop and a browser, right? And, uh, exactly. And yeah, exactly, and that's where. We have a great place where we can allow people to focus on what's important, which is producing great content, producing great products, um, delivering a great workshop, not the, okay, now I need to spin up 150 machines for the attendees and how do I give them the IP addresses and the passwords and, okay, what does that, I now need to remember to turn them off. Last thing I want to do at the end of the workshop is remember to turn off machines. If I forget, I've got more cost. Like there's lots of moving parts, which generally are solved with some random bash scripts, which are then need to be maintained and kind of like tested, et cetera. So it's a distraction. And by using Catacoda, we're finding that people can actually focus again more on the content, spend more time on what's important for the attendees and less time on the uh, surrounding infrastructure. And we can take care of that um, for them. So I, I can't, I personally can't wait to, to see these quizzes or tests, self-paced tests, whatever you're, you're going to call this feature um, in place. I, I, I love that idea to essentially really have a kind of like toll gate saying like, hey, uh, not just rushing through it, it's like, yeah, 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 whatever, but really saying, hey, did I actually understand what's going on there? Like prove it, right? Enter the exactly. right command or click the right place or whatever. And that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. yeah. And I think it would be great when just as a, extra place to start learning. So he's read a great blog post on OpenShift blog. And it's like, okay, do I, have I actually read that properly? Or have I understood all of the moving parts? I haven't missed a section. It's so easy to miss critical aspects when you're reading online. It's just, it's a difficult experience. And so we want to make sure that we're not, people are fully understanding the content, um, focusing less on the text and more on directing developers on what's important commands and being very developer, kind of focused on our ways of learning and you know i, I might be biased because I, i'm been using catacoda now quite extensively in the, the context of learn.openshift.com but the other day I, I just wanted to show off my new little tool cube dash and i was like okay i'm just going to put together um a catacoda scenario for it and it literally only took me i think 15 minutes or whatever I initially started out with the online editor and just, you know, I, I, of course, I knew what I wanted to do there, but like literally from starting to having it online and everyone just go there and try it out. That's like, that's awesome, right? That's really, so I, I think I'm trying to encourage others to really have a look at it and see if they can, you know, use it for, for their own uh, projects as well. I, it's, I think, the perfect environment. Yeah, um, we, have, we, have some, um, we have some really interesting projects. My favorite at the moment is uh, Chaos Toolkit, apart from yours, obviously. Um, oh, obviously. Chaos Toolkit <laughs> is uh, yeah. a really interesting, it's going into that whole chaos development um, theory, which everyone's getting excited about and running chaos monkeys on infrastructure and kind of I... does your application actually work as you expect it to when things start falling apart. Um, and awesome. I think that's a really great case where um, they just started writing content 
um, they didn't need any anything from ourselves, they didn't engage. Um, initially, they just went onto the website, and as you said, it's like writing a blog post pretty much. Um, takes about the same time, but the benefit is it's interactive and people can experiment. And now they've got a great set of content which kind of demonstrates different aspects of their open source projects and their toolkit. And you can um, start winning some chaos theory um, principles um, and seeing actually how it works in a place um, online. So it's um, it's nice to see projects starting to kind of embrace it with us without our involvement because that's so that actually there's something there which is always always good to see right. um, and nice validation. Right. And then uh, once we have that, we can start promoting different community projects more through Catacoda itself. So you have your own profile page, which you can kind of promote and share, but we want to do more to support that. And obviously half the battle is discovery. So I think we can yes. do more to help help um, people discover different projects and actually discover what problems um, can be solved. Very similar to what the cloud native landscape's doing, like just highlighting mm -hmm. all of the different right. moving parts in a nice categorized way. I think we can do something similar with open source and the content which we have on Catacoda too. Awesome. And in, in, in a sense, you already kind of like preempted what I wanted to ask you next, but maybe there's something else, like what, what else is there? It doesn't have to be necessary within Catacoda, but you can. Uh, what excites you? What's, what's, you know, what are you into? Maybe it is chaos engineering, maybe it is machine learning. Um, what, what is it? What, what uh, drives Ben Paul? Um, so I think one of the things which I enjoy about Catacoda is it itself, it can evolve as the world around it is evolving. So initially we're very much focused on Docker and kind of like what containers are. And then we saw more growth and energy around Kubernetes and kind of we could then support and add more content to focus on that. Um, we've got some Nomad content coming um, from the HashiCorp team, which is very exciting. Um, Nomad itself is a very interesting proposition. Um, I think many people overlook and kind of like Kubernetes have got such a mind share and just such a community passion behind it now. Um, Nomad is probably the purest scheduler of them all. It just schedules workloads. But for many companies, that's exactly what they need. They just want a scheduler. They just want to like run this JVM car somewhere and like just make it happen and then return me the results. Um, they don't want to go through the stress of setting up clusters and networking and everything like that. So I think it's interesting to see where all of this technology is evolving and just kind of being, uh, being able to play and learn and see what the different viewpoints are is great. And then obviously that then drives helping companies understand more and helping them have a better adoption strategy and kind of solving more interesting problems. So that's always interesting and I still really enjoy doing that. Um, it's always fun to deliver a workshop in a classroom and see how different companies are facing different problems and um, how we can help utilize cloud native to make their lives easier and make their lives right. better. So that's fun. Um, so we've got more of that coming in the future, um, partnering with different companies to kind of do co-workshops um, together, so working with their community, um, taking advantage of Catacoda and the resources which we have available um, to kind of like share and collaborate um, and kind of get the best of both worlds. So that's exciting. Um, more conferences as always. Um, so yeah, so we've got that coming. Um, and then I think just generally exploring different ways of learning. Like as I said, we've got challenges coming, but everyone is very different in their approaches. Some people like video content, some people like blog posts, some people like interactivity, um, some people like a compilation of all, the, all of them. Um, or maybe there's a new approach which we haven't even started to explore yet. And so being able to investigate and explore what is the best way to help people understand this very complex, fast moving space is gonna be um, an exciting challenge and something which we're, I'm looking forward to exploring and spending more time on. Um, now we've got the foundations in place, we can start um, pushing that um, and seeing it. So we're playing with some secret things, um, which are not so secret, but if you hint hard enough. Um, but yeah, there's some things which we're exploring um, to try and enhance what else can we bring to an interactive platform and how else can that okay. look and feel? So, so yeah, there's lots in the future. Um, that sounds that's exciting. <laughs> yeah, there's so, lots on my plate. Hence why it's all a bit over the place at the moment because right. um, 
roadmaps, roadmaps are being crafted um, and explored um, at the start of the year. Um, so yeah, that's, that's great. And then as you said, um, more kind of helping people in the classroom, helping companies um, themselves adopt new technologies and helping them understand it from um, kind of like an internal viewpoint. So um, you've got like, distributed teams, you've got different teams working on different things. How can they collaborate more effectively together and make sure that they're uh, transferring knowledge effectively and making sure that knowledge isn't being dropped when people move around or shift teams or contractors come in and out, making sure that everything's being captured in a successful way. So right. lots of different moving parts. Awesome. And I, I am very tempted, so I have to ask, is there already a Bitcoin slash blockchain scenario up there? Not yet. Um, we do have some from the community. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so there is some community driven content. Um, so yeah, again, it's that whole um, trying to discover it. So um, okay. we're adding a search, search engine um, so that you'll be able to come in and type blockchain and then you'll, you'll discover all of our blockchain content oh. created by the community. So that's a much better way of discovering it. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, there's definitely some blockchain content on there because um, it's an exciting, it's like people are excited, like, what is this new technology? Is it even relevant to me? Um, and people want to explore. So, um, yeah, the community's kind of stepped in and kind of started producing some of that to showcase um, creating like um, Ethereum contracts and using their API and stuff like that. So it's um, it's cool to see. Um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, not on my radar yet. Um, too many, too many other things um, to be learning. Um, myself but i know that i know that there's catacoda content there when i need to very good so uh, wrapping up um you've been doing catacoda now for how many years that's like uh i think it's about two years i think on, on kind of like yeah the early days were prototypes and experiments um wow. to see uh kind of like what was happening so 18 months to two years you're based out of London, so if people are in London, they should hit you up and get, you know, get a coffee for you and, and tell you how awesome kind yep. of it is. Definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, we're based in central London, um, and then we just kind of go to different conferences. So yeah, if you ever see me, see me around or want to have a chat, then definitely uh, send me a tweet or send me an email, and that would be great. Um, also, we go spend a lot of time at the different London meetups. So Kubernetes London, Cloud Native London, Docker London, which we help organize, Istio London. We've got a great community here. So um, you'll see me dotted around at various of those, probably on my laptop at the back, um, answering emails. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Hey, Ben, thanks so much for that. Uh, I assume there will be questions once we put up that video. And um, yeah, thanks a lot. And, and you know, Keep up the the great work there. Uh, we we all love uh, Katakota here at, at Red Hat, and um, yeah, hope that uh, that this journey, this successful journey, continues for you. And uh, yeah, keep it up. Awesome. Yeah. No. Thank you very much. It's been fun. Cheers.